Do you want to capture action like sports or wildlife? Do you want a great high performance low light sensor? What if I told you you can shoot 10 frames a second at 20.2 megapixels with an APS-C sensor that has a native ISO up to 16,000. And you can have all that for well under two grand. Hi, I'm Larry Becker. There sure has been a lot of excitement since the announcement of the Canon 7D Mark II. The focus and burst capture performance of this camera are practically on par with the top of the line Canon and Nikon full frame rigs that cost thousands more. My review is based on having used a pre-release 7D Mark II for a couple of weeks and I'll break things down for you this way. We'll have a look at the amazing performance, the images, video performance, I'll tell you about some capabilities and features you may not have heard about yet, and we'll take a look at some of the other technologies that make up the 7D Mark II. The burst rate is one of the first cues that Canon has built a camera that will let pros and enthusiasts capture action on par with their top-of-the-line full-frame 1DX. Shooting at 10 frames a second is just amazing, but I've seen a lot of impressive burst rate specs out there that end up being disappointing because the buffer is so small you can't shoot more than 8 or 10 frames before you have to wait to shoot again. The 7D Mark II has two Digic 6 image processors and a big buffer, so you can shoot 31 RAW files or 130 of the highest quality full resolution JPEGs. Then consider that Canon has equipped the 7D Mark II with dual pixel CMOS AF technology. I'm talking about 65 cross-type autofocus points. That means fast, incredibly accurate autofocus performance. And I was amazed to see a comprehensive autofocus menu set like what I was used to with the 1DX. There are autofocus scenarios that allow you to preset the camera's AF behaviors based on the kind of subject movement you're shooting. Each scenario can be fine-tuned like on the 1DX. One of my favorite new features is this autofocus area selector lever. It's a ring around the multi-controller. Just bump it while you're focusing and the camera is up to your eye and it will quickly cycle through the focus modes like single point focus, automatic area autofocus, and so on. Canon has other cameras with a 20.2 megapixel APS-C sensor, but this is a newly developed sensor. The native ISO range goes from 100 to 16,000 and the low noise performance of those high ISO images are as good as anything I've seen from any APS-C sensor to date. Of course, the spec sheet says that the ISO can be boosted up to 51,200, but I look at boosted ISOs the same way I look at digital zoom. I don't pay too much attention to it because I can usually get better results tweaking an image in Photoshop. Beyond low noise, low light photography, and great images when you're freezing sports or wildlife action, the 7D Mark II does a brilliant job capturing true colors and subtle soft details. Canon has a solid reputation for quality video capture with their DSLR lineup, and the 7D Mark II has some improvements that will make budding cinematographers happy. Of course, 1080p 60 is expected, but there's a lot more. There's both a microphone and a headphone jack so that you can use an external mic and monitor your audio too. The HDMI output lets you stream clean, uncompressed video, and the audio signal is integrated as well. You can save your video files as MP4 or MOV files, and this next feature is getting a lot of buzz. You can fine-tune the speed of the autofocus so it does exactly what you want during filming. That way, you can slow it down so that the focus racking looks more manual and cinematic. With the introduction of the 70D, Canon gave us our first taste of dual pixel CMOS AF technology, so we realized that one of the great benefits is that autofocusing during filming could be accurate without focus hunting, and that accurate focusing can happen even during live view. The 7D Mark II does that as well. The main thing I miss is that the 3-inch 1.04 million dot LCD on the 7D Mark II is not a touch screen like on the 70D, and it's a fixed screen as well. So you won't be touching where you want to focus, and you don't have easy screen visibility when you're shooting high or low. 
With a new camera announcement like this, there are lots of things that make headlines, but here are some of the things under the hood that you might not have heard about yet. It's got a magnesium alloy body, and it's considerably more weather sealed than the 70D. The new mirror system reduces vibration for even sharper image capture, and the shutter is rated for 200,000 actuations. The metering system doesn't just meter brightness, it's infrared and RGB aware, so it's going to be considerably more accurate. The USB connector on this camera is USB 3. That's not only much faster than USB 2 for connecting to your computer, but it's also the connector that the optional WFT-E7A wireless file transmitter uses. While the 7D Mark II doesn't have onboard Wi-Fi, if a pro needs to use this rig to cover a live sporting event and upload files right away to a DLNA media server, the WFT-E7A does exactly that. On the other hand, if you just want to have normal Wi-Fi file transfer capabilities or Wi-Fi remote control, it'll be less expensive to add something like a Cam Ranger. Just make sure they've updated their firmware to support the 7D Mark II. There's a built-in GPS for geotagging your images, and there's even a compass. So your metadata will not only tell you where you were on a map, it can tell you what direction you were facing when you took your shot. One of the really cool hidden features for me is the built-in lens aberration correction. And I'm not talking about in-camera post-processing lens profiles. This is a shooting menu item that lets the camera compensate for lens anomalies automatically as you shoot. So it's telling the camera to pre-adjust to compensate for known lens issues. That means it works with RAW files too. I only tested the settings with my 18-135 to 135 EFS lens, but the menu recognized the lens and it let me make adjustments even though I was shooting RAW and my JPEG capture was turned off. The 7D Mark II lets you customize a surprising number of the buttons and dials. I also mentioned the AF scenarios and how you can fine-tune them if you like. The optical viewfinder can be customized to show things that you want to see. And you can even have a level displayed at the top of that optical viewfinder. You've probably heard that the 7D Mark II can take compact flash or SD cards. But you can choose which one is the primary card and which one gets the overflow. You could program one for JPEG and the other one to store your RAW files. Or you can program them both to capture the same info so that you have a simultaneous backup. There are three programmable custom shooting mode dial positions. The shutter speed range is programmable, and most of the buttons are reprogrammable. You can even change the positive and negative direction of the control dials. Here's one of the buttons I customized. It's the rate button to the left of the LCD. The way I shoot, I never bother to rate my images on the camera. So I just changed that button so it protects images from accidental deletion. And my buddy Scott Kelby changed the autofocus area lever to allow quick exposure compensation adjustments instead of leaving it on the default AF area selection. There's a lighting situation some still shooters have been a victim of and they don't necessarily know why. Some of their images are exposed incorrectly, especially in places with fluorescent lighting. That's because several kinds of indoor lights flicker faster than the human eye can see and some shots happen at full light while others happen at lower light output volume. The 7D Mark II has a flicker detection capability, and when it's enabled, it adjusts your shutter firing so you get shots with full ambient light. And you can optionally include that flicker warning on your viewfinder display. This works for both stills and burst shots, but it's not available for video. You can capture multiple exposures with up to nine images, either additive or average, there's a built-in intervalometer. And the bulb mode isn't just shutter controlled. It has a bulb mode timer available. Now, there's one aspect of this camera that isn't actually a hidden feature, but the benefits may not be readily apparent to everyone. It's that APS-C sensor size and the 1.6x crop factor. First of all, you'll be able to use the EF and EFS lenses not just EF lenses like on full-frame cameras. Your lens selection will be bigger and less expensive lenses will be more plentiful than what's available for full-frame Canon cameras. And because of that 1.6x crop factor, a lens like my 18 to 135mm zoom lens will give me the 35mm equivalent of having a 28.8 
to 216 millimeter lens. There are many great things about the 7D Mark II, but the fact that Canon packed so many high-end features into such an affordable body is what makes the biggest difference. A true pro shooting experience is now in reach of just about everyone. For B&H and Kelby One, I'm Larry Becker. Thanks for watching. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help. Scott Kelby here and welcome to this quick tour of our online training. We have hundreds of online classes for you covering everything from lighting to landscape photography. From portrait photography to sports, we have classes on wedding, automotive photography, shooting, food, fashion, travel, you name it. The most incredible part of this is the price. You get all of this for just $199 a year, or you can pay monthly for just $24.95. 24 hour a day, seven day a week access from anywhere in the world. I invite you to join with us today and start learning right now.